This is Twit. Alan uh, is next in Hawaii. Hi, Alan, you lucky dog. Leo hey, Laporte. Leo, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Great. You know, I talked to you all about a month ago because I was on my way to China and using my smartphone and also right. taking my computer and, and talking back to my office. And I've got the good, the bad, and the ugly to report back to you. That's what I want to hear. That's great. You were concerned, of course, that uh, Facebook and Twitter and other services were blocked in China. You wanted a way that you could uh, use. Did you, did you end up using a VPN? Uh, no, I I kind of risked it because I, I use remote desktop and I do have a specific port. You know, uh, uh, I just don't use the default port in my system here. So I because I have a, a firewall. And uh, the good to report is that both the remote desktop and TeamViewer worked flawlessly. It was no problem. That's probably so, because so there's different ways that the Great Firewall of China or any firewall can block traffic. One is simply by port. So, you know, that sounds like that's the way they were doing it, which is, hey, we're just going to block the standard ports used for RDP. Then we don't have to, you know, think about it. And if anybody's sophisticated enough to use an alternate port, well, we won't worry about them. The other way, deep packet inspection or stateful packet inspection allows them to do it by looking into your content and saying, oh, I could tell, you know, looking at the headers and so forth, I could tell what that is and blocking it. So it sounds like they're using the simpler but less effective method. So that's good to know. Now, I had some other good things that went on was that uh, my, my phone carrier is T-Mobile. Yeah. And believe it or not, shockingly, and this is just between you and me, uh, I was able to use Google and Facebook and everything else in Beijing. Oh, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Now, T-Mobile offers, and I've used this in London, they offer uh, free uh, data. It's low speed. It's 2G, but that's still better than nothing as you travel. It, it, was, it was a little slow, and the cab drivers, when I was, because no one speaks English there whatsoever, right. when I was trying to get somewhere and I brought up my Google map, they nearly got into a car accident saying, Google! <laughs> they, they We've never seen that! that. <laughs> you know. And that's interesting. I guess that's you're going through T-Mobile servers, which are not blocked somehow. Well, it went through China Telecom, which was kind of interesting. But, of course, in my hotel room with the wireless that the hotel provided, my iPad could not right. use any of those services. So, it just shows you the uh, so-called Great Firewall of China is not particularly effective. And I think the Chinese authorities know that, and they expect the the smarter people to get around it, and they're not worried about them. They just want to keep kind of the... The masses from learning what's going on. But I did have friends that went to China a month before me, and they had AT and T, and they were not able to use. Interesting. Uh, now, some of the other weird things that went on while we were there was that, and you mentioned about with T Mobile having only two G speed. When I got there, I got this wonderful text message saying, "Hey, if you want four G speed, yeah. you can pay an extra fee," which yeah. I did. But I was never able to get it, and I had to call oh. them, and, of course, they reversed the, the, the charge. Good. But that has to do with – that is a very complicated topic. That has to do with the radio frequencies. So it depends on the phones. You know, in fact, Apple made a lot of uh, hay saying, look, we now support almost all the LTE frequencies in the world, and that's because they want to sell in China. So not every phone will have the right frequencies for every country. Now, the weirdest thing that happened, which is part of my call today, was something that, that I experienced, and I'm wondering if it's going to come to the United States. I would be walking around uh, the city, and all of a sudden, I would get a text message in Chinese, obviously. But when I, I had a guide with me sometimes, I said, what is this? And he said, it's an ad. And wow. And it was it was very odd to get a text message <laughs> that obviously was coming from China Telecom you know, is where it's coming well, from. Well, it was coming. No, it, it was. It was the weird thing. It was location specific. We right. passed by a building somewhere. Right. And so it was, China like, Telecom knows where you are. Your own yes. Your own provider would as well when you get home. So right. they obviously something that it would be kind of repugnant in the United States, but obviously they don't care in China, uh, they know where you are, and they don't mind you knowing that. <laughs> and that was part of my question today, is is this something that's going to come to the United States where I'm going to be passing by... Over my bottle? dead body. <laughs> well, is, is that something that's regulated? Am I going to be passing, driving by McDonald's, yeah. and I'm going to get a text message saying, come in for a free Big Mac? I don't think it's currently regulated. 
Um, I certainly get so you know you, you get them today free text message. Here's a free text message from T-Mobile. You know we've got great rates if you. So I'm already getting a little bit of that, and they always make sure to say this isn't co this isn't coming against your your total text messages. We're sending this free, but it's still an ad, uh, and I think that. So they have the capability, and I don't think it's illegal, or they couldn't do even that. Uh, but I think if they st they are well aware that there would be a consumer hue and cry if they did that, and maybe even the regulations would be introduced because we don't want. Ad I mean, I don't want ads popping up. On the other hand, location based advertising is perhaps the hottest topic right now for mobile. Google wants to do it. Everybody wants to do it. They want to be able to, and this is why Apple, uh, you know, if you, what kind of phone did you use? I had a uh, Note 3. Okay. This is why Apple uh, on its iPhone kind of annoyingly reiterates, even after you give an application permission to know your location, will say one more time, hey, you know that this thing is always monitoring your location. Is that okay with you? And those are where you would see location-based apps, your browser or, uh, you know, TripIt. Um, you know, one of the apps that you're running, Square, Foursquare, I get little, when I open Foursquare, I get little tips. It says, oh, hi. In fact, Foursquare gives me notifications. Oh, I see your P.F. Chang's. You know, the peanut roasted chicken is fabulous. And that's an ad. So we're doing, that's through an app, though, not from your carrier. So I think it's just a matter of time. But, but All we, I can say is boo. Boo. <laughs> and what I would hope is that the carriers would give you an opt-out. So you, that's interesting. So you got, as you traveled around, were they commercial messages? Uh, they were messages for things like, how about a great massage? Yeah. <laughs> they, wow. No, they, were, they were the, they were the um, CD kind of messages. CD messages. Oh, yeah, that's even were, worse. For things like. That's even worse. And it was coming. Yeah, I understand. You don't have to go into yeah. detail. Yeah. I, <laughs> Um, uh, were they and and they were they were standard SMS text messages coming from your carrier? Exactly. Well, there you go. It's just a matter of time. China is the harbinger of our future. <laughs> oh boy, that's that would be. I would not want CD messages in so my. The bad uh, or the ugly from China, Leo. Hey, I really appreciate the report back, Alan. You couldn't use Facebook. You couldn't use Twitter. You couldn't use Google unless you used your T-Mobile phone, and then it worked. Right, and so my workaround in my hotel was I used uh, I tethered as my own hotspot. Very nice. Now you have uh, kind of unfettered uh, internet access, but it really brings home how bad it could be. It really brings that home. Hey, I thank you for uh, thank you for. The, did you have a great time in China? It, it was amazing. A great time. Great cultural experience. Isn't it? What an amazing country, and the food. Oh my goodness! Except for a six-year-old. No. no yeah. I went there with my uh, my son when he was, I think, 12 or 13. And he, to this day, says the best food he's ever had. So just Google wait a few years. Great. Google Maps was great as far as finding the nearest McDonald's. I think traveling without Google Maps would be hard nowadays. Hey, thank you. you yeah. It's good. To, very interesting information.